Welcome to the Let Me Guide You series, this time on creating stunning visualizations uh, in your storyboards using SAP Lumira. My name is Ivo van Zandt, I work for uh, SAP Business Analytics. On the screen you see some forecast, actual and budget data with derived metrics. And all the key metrics are in these tiles with uh, automatically um, color-coded indicators. So if I change the selection, for example, you will see that Italy did uh, a little worse than uh, all the countries together. I have some navigation over here, so I can go to finance tab, different tabs, and my core charts are centralized on the screen, uh, all using the same color code. Um, on the bottom, you see that I use quite, uh, quite often dynamic text, which is very useful. So you see this number over here, which will change if I change the selection in the uh, in the chart so it's the use of dynamic text you'll see it over here um, if I go to the next page so I can use this um, navigation panel if I just tap it it goes to the next page where you see again the use mm. of, um, of uh, these color coded indicators uh, that automatically change to indicate forecast delta of this year compared to last year but quite important on this one, I use the, uh, the Graphomate uh, charts that are very um, impressive. The Graphomate charts uh, do respect 100% the Hickert principles, uh, which you can read about on the, uh, on the blog site furthermore. And again, I, uh, I used over here a little selection box that you can use. You can see that I try to use as a limited number of colors as possible. So the core is light blue with white. If I use color coding, it's uh, green and red, and that's it. That is being reused in all the other uh, graphs. And you see that I, uh, for navigation, indicated with these little squares that are now on the finance tab of the, um, of the dashboard. I can take the next step, the predictions one, which brings me to the prediction section that you, uh, <coughs> you see in this one. Um, Again, I, uh, over here I use some other graphs, uh, you can open them, you, will, you, uh, you know the, uh, the way of working. Just by clicking them, they open up and the user can further analyze the data like he or she wants. I also added in this one a, a little globe that you can tick, which brings you to the, um, to, um, the uh, geodata that I brought in. I did a little bit of SRE over here, again, all in the same color code. And um, so I can go back using this navigation button. So the next section is um, <clears throat> on backlog. So I can tick the backlog or go back to finance, for example. But let me tick the backlog. And over here, you see that I use this um, custom extension uh, with a mini donut. Very impressive. Again, the two big tiles on top to uh, clearly indicate the metrics. Uh, this tab is on uh, new orders and backlog. Well, you see the numbers over here and uh, over here there is a, a heat map per order line this one indicates uh, indicates the backlog for 2013 uh, and this one um, uh, indicates the different orders for 2013 12 and 11 um, again with all the same functionality over here you see i used uh, slightly other color coding but all in the um, in the same uh, Four colors, white, light blue, or variances of that. And in the last step, I created this dashboard, interactive dashboard for the end user to, uh, to go through. So what I've done is uh, all my um, selection boxes are on the left-hand side, grouped. And uh, I did some um, custom visualizations over here. Um, so um, you can automatically um, choose the different PL elements that somebody would like to have a look at. Uh, so let me choose a few. These ones to make the data applicable. And you see how my charts are automatically adjusting. This one is a uh, quite interesting one. This one is a... Uh, mm chart that uses color coding uh, with exceptional highlighting. So you see it over here by Hoover. I uh, have said that uh, if net proceeds 2013 is better than 2012, I want you to indicate it as green. 
if you then change the chart into a, um, a bar chart, uh, it becomes this uh, automatically color-coded chart, which is uh, very impressive. Um, you can use it in your dashboard as, um, as performance indicators. So let us now go a little bit more into detail in the step-by-step -step that I uh, create, uh, did to uh, create all this. So um, I just erase the filters. And if you go back then, uh, of course, the first thing that you need to start with is uh, preparing your data, which I did over here. It's not the focus for this Let Me Guide You series. So here's my data. I did quite a lot of uh, formulas and derived metrics uh, for all kinds of data that I wanted to use. Um, and the next basically step, and I cannot show you that in the video, is that you draft on a paper what your aim is of your storyboard. So what are you... Um, uh, going to show to your end user how do you divide the information uh, per page in your storyboard do you make uh, various pages uh, do you make a landing page um, how do you divide the different areas over the pages uh, in my case I, I split it up finance and order data for example um, you think about on your draft uh, what kind of colors in core you want to use uh, if there are any specific pictures that you uh, that you need in your visualization, so you all draft that on a uh, on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard, and the next step going back to the mirror is that you start creating your visualizations. Well, again, we've talked about that uh, quite some time. Over here, you see the visualizations that I created. I did not use them all in my um, in my storyboard, but just um, to show you a few. Um, The one that I uh, wanted to highlight is, uh, is this one, for example. So I started with a, um, a, um, a cross tab and I used uh, the exceptional highlighting in Manage Rules to indicate how my metrics uh, needed to be color coded. And if you use this as a basis and you change this graph into, for example, a bar chart, then you can see that you uh, have um, Lumira keeps respecting the color coding in the bar charts. And if I now uh, select only uh, the difference from actual, for example, I can use that in my tiles. Uh, if the end user changes the year, for example, then it automatically indicates the color coding for actual um, in green or red, depending on what the end user selects. So this is quite important. Um, over here you see another example of what I used. I used this one literally in my board. It's the difference um, uh, in forecast delta by year. And you see I used, I just basically used these uh, color coding indicator conditional formatting uh, to apply the color coding and then um, use that in my stories. So I did that for all kinds of metrics. Over here you see a number of all these metrics I used in the tiles. And over here you see the two um, graphomates. And uh, you can, um, we have them available for Lumira. Uh, it's an extension, a custom extension. Very powerful charts. Uh, so they do respect the Eckert standard. Um, you see over here that it works uh, with absolute new numbers. So over here is my actual versus budget 2013. And these are the deviations that are uh, in a percentage metric uh, plotted up front, uh, above. And in your base chart, you can uh, plot um, uh, the metrics that, in this case, I used the actual budget to all make it fit nicely together. Here's another uh, example that I created. So I'm still in step number two, creating my visualizations. Yes, so you need to, um, to finalize uh, the visualizations that you want to show uh, to your end user. And then basically step number four is that I uh, start using a drawing tool before I start uh, creating my storyboards. And what do I mean with that? What I've done um, in my uh, white, uh, whiteboarding, I've uh, thought about how I want to visualize things and I just started using PowerPoint to um, use this uh, default color. Um, you see grid lines over here, light blue. And what I've done is the following. I make little tiles uh, and I put pictures in there. Uh, these are the tiles that I use as uh, in the landing page um, with the two 
four wide sections and my navigation panel. Um, for my second um, uh, page in my storyboard, I uh, limit it down a little bit to two tiles and I use these uh, small squares. This is uh, the next um, uh, page and the last page for orders. Uh, you see that I move the uh, little square over here because later on in my uh, storyboard I make it clickable so people first know where they are. Yeah, so now you are on predictions, now you are on orders and you can click the other sides to, um, to navigate. Uh, so once I've done that I uh, will save this as you should save this as GP, uh, GPEX. Yeah, and if you do that, you can uh, you can do it and uh, apply it to all slides. I won't do it uh, for overriding. And then I go back to Mira and I start creating uh, my storyboard. So uh, I'll let me go out of preview mode to show you a little bit what I've done. Uh, so if I go back on page one. You see that on page one, I, um, uh, I just use, by clicking page settings, uh, you just um, use this button, add background. So I, uh, I added the background that I created in PowerPoint. And then I just drag and drop, and over here you can see it, the little uh, visualizations with number with point data. So they're all over here. Here are the ones that I use, and I just drag and drop them over here. Uh, and later on, I use the small color coding indicators that are over here. So I created them yeah, for per different section that I wanted to use. Um, I also added these little pictures that you can just, uh, if you click the pictogram and you uh, add ones, then you can. Uh, import uh, vector diagrams for example so i downloaded a few on the web over here you see one this one yeah and i just dragged and dropped it over here and uh, if you just select select it yeah then you can see that i uh, if i had selected it um here it is oops yeah you can add a hyperlink to it which i did uh, you see that it uh, goes to page number three in this case yeah. so um that is what I do over there. If I go to the next page, and also quite helpful uh, for you for your navigation, you have seen in the PowerPoint that I created this uh, these little tiles to indicate where I am. What I also did, I just dragged and dropped uh, shapes to the screen over here. Um, I, uh, let me do it like an example. If I just drag and drop a shape over here, Here you go, and if you now click the shape and you make it no color line and no color fill, then uh, it is invisible for the end user, but you still have the option to add navigation to it. Yeah, so I can now, if I, for example, in the text want to uh, have the end user navigate to the geo page, yeah. If you would do right now, you can see if I click the preview button, you see it will go to the navigation section. Yeah. So this is how it works. Uh, this is a little trick that I use quite often to do it. So most important from this lesson is using PowerPoint to create your backgrounds uh, with, for example, your tiles. Yeah. I, uh, I use these, uh, these tiles over here, these white spaces to add all my data and uh, use pictures or invisible pictures to create the visualizations um, and again my third tip from this lesson is to try to stick with as limited colors as possible in this storyboard a little lot of uh, white blue and variations on blue and uh, well i hope it helps you and uh, we talk to each other the next time many thanks